Hello and welcome everybody to another release update of AxisOS, the operating system that powers our Axis network devices. My name is Turgut Öner and I am part of the AxisOS product management team at Axis Communications. In this software release update, we will explore what is new in AxisOS 12.0 and give you a sneak peek preview of what's coming next. Now let's look at where we are on a detailed plan. The AxisOS 11 version has been discontinued as an active track and is in transition to a new LTS track which is called 2024 LTS. It's covered in a separate video which was published recently. It is now time to increment the major version of AxisOS active track, starting with the release of AxisOS 12.0. Incrementing the major version, what does it mean for us? It means we can finally introduce the breaking changes we have been planning and communicating for a long time. In this release, our priority is on removing outdated functionality that is not used anymore. Change the default settings for increased security and change the behavior of existing features to make them better. Additionally, some devices have been moved to LTS 2024 track and will no longer receive feature updates. Axis OS 12.0 will be available on over 150 devices, compared to the 220 devices supported by version 11.11. However, we expect this number to grow only, potentially surpass the record set by Axis OS 11. Now let's look into some highlights. Image alt analytics are pre-installed as an ACAP on some Artpack 8 products. We will talk about a bit more detail under the support list later. We created a toggle to disable anonymous access for basic device info. This was a feedback from customers and it is due to the security concerns of the information disclosure that the device provides. Some customers would like to gear the products towards a stealth mode where no information disclosure is provided. Pan tilt position metadata is also updated. Now it is calculated with physical constraints in tilt and pan when using the generic pan tilt position space. Same as already calculated in OMIF. Let's move into cybersecurity related updates. Root privilege access to access products and ACAP applications has been removed indefinitely without the possibility to enable it back. This will improve overall security and integrity in Access OS. We also removed the support for OpenSSL 1, which is replaced by OpenSSL 3. The older versions will be available in LTS tracks and will be updated separately. As usual, we updated the curl and the Apache versions to the latest available version to increase the overall cybersecurity level. Among the other vulnerabilities, we address a special CVE. It includes downgrade restrictions that we will cover later. We discussed breaking changes in previous videos. What were they? Here are a few ones I would like to remind you. Please note, this isn't the complete list. IPv version 4 compliance has been implemented. The Axis OS devices will use the IP addresses either from DHCP server or statically configured address. The well-known default address 192.168.0.90 is gone. We have removed re legacy overlays. The ability to create overlays through the Param CGI is removed. Dynamic overlay API should be used instead. We have removed the support for SMB version 1 and 2 to increase the overall cybersecurity. The latest version of SMB3 will be in use. We have also disabled the UPnP discovery protocol. Access devices currently have UPnP and Bonjour enabled in factory default state for general device discovery. The Bonjour protocol allows for the device detection within the local subnet where the UPnP allows the device discovery across networks. Access believes that device detection within the local subnet is the main use case. Therefore, UPnP is disabled in factory defaulted devices moving forward. This will also lower the attack surface of the device and increase the overall network security. The UPnP protocol remains available in access devices with the option for the user to enable it if it needed. There are also updates in the rate control. As Vapix, rate control API has evolved over the years. Max bitrate, variable bitrate, average bitrate are available today for access cameras. However, the relationship between some of the URL options and the param CGI parameters has become complicated. That is why we simplified the usage and introduced some behavioral changes. I also want to mention that two changes planned for Axis OS 12.0 has been postponed. Basic authentication for HTTPS connections and disabling the VS Discovery protocol are now scheduled for 
12.1. More changes are on the way, so please check the Aki Service portal for detailed information. Last but not least, it's also time for us to start planning the breaking changes for Aki OS 13, which is two years away from now. Some information is already available on Access OS portal and we aim to complete the list within one year. Now it's time for the spotlights. An exciting new feature from our analytic team is Image Health Analytics. This is a significant advancement over our previous tampering functionality. Using machine learning, it provides detailed insights into the image issues, allowing customers to optimize the maintenance schedules, especially for the cameras in hard-to-reach locations. This analytics feature can detect events such as blocked or redirected as tampering, blurred or underexposed images as the new features. Additionally, there is a general event that encompasses any of these conditions. Single lens fixed cameras with ArtPack 8 will get this feature. For all supported models, please check the release notes. We plan to include other chipsets, thermals, fisheye, and multi-sensor devices in the future, so stay tuned. As last note, new cameras with image out will not have the tampering. Axis OS web version B is gone. Some of you may know it as Axis Camera Assistant as well. It was primarily designed for cameras, but with our expanding portfolio of diverse devices, we have developed Axis Device Assistant, also known as Axis OS web version C. We had mentioned about a particular vulnerability, CV2024-7784. In LTS 11.11.109, we have addressed this CV in our secure boot architecture. To avoid the risk of downgrade attacks, we need to restrict downgrading to an older Axos version other than the latest supported 10.12 LTS track if it's available for your products. Naturally, it's also patched in Axos 12.0. This means that you can roll back but once you have upgraded, you cannot downgrade to lower version of LTS 2024 and LTS 2022. We had launched 10.12.252. That includes this patch. But then we saw an issue once you upgrade to 11.11.73, which was the latest active track by the release time. That is why it has been revoked and a new version will come. This applies to products based on ArtPack 8 and all IMX chipset. All related products can be found in the release notes page. Why do we need to limit the downgrades? A similar issue was found in UEFI boot sector in the PC world, which address in a comparable manner. While we can patch the current version, failing to block downgrades allows the same attack to reoccur through the simple rollback. In other words, we have locked the doors, but we also need to secure the windows and the chimney in this particular case. That concludes it for AxisOS 12.0 release update. The new video will be about AxisOS 12.1 in November. There will be another video coming in between, and it will be the technical update AxOS 12 troubleshooting. That's all for today. I hope you found this update helpful. Please explore the links provided for more information. And thank you for joining. Be sure to keep an eye out for the new videos in our AxOS playlist on YouTube. Until then, bye!